Kate, good morning. I think we've heard Wonderful World a few times, maybe too many times, but beautiful world that uh, we live in and it's lovely, isn't it, to have a beautiful morning which is full of sunshine. So uh, it's a good day to be outside. Now I'd like all the children and their parents to come over if you can. Could you come over here? Just to start this, it would be good to have you. I don't know where Becca is. I don't know if she's coming with hers, but we've got a few children, which is always lovely. And I just wanted to conduct an experiment. Okay. So we've got parents or grandparents. Okay, now I want to ask you, what was the first words that your children spoke? Do you know? Has Coco got any words yet? Can you speak any words? No. No. Oh, she knows no. Okay, that's predictable, isn't it? So, no. What was the, do you know the first words you said? In Portuguese. Bom dia. That's good. Good morning, I'd like. Oh, I knew it. Bom dia, that's good. Amazing. What about you? Do you remember, or Sally, do you remember some of the first words? Dad, oh. yeah. It's often mum or dad, isn't it? And what about uh, Jocelyn? No, no. 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 Oh, oh, it's not looking good, is it? No mum or dad. Okay, now second question is, did you ever teach your children to say thank you? Yes, did your mum mum or dad teach you? Have you taught um, Coco? She said ta. Ta. That's okay, isn't it? Ta. Do you say ta? <laughs> now, what's thank you in Portuguese? I think I know. Obrigado. Obrigado. Can you all say obrigado? Obrigado. 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 So you learnt to say thank you, Maisie. Yeah. Did your mum teach you to say, or your dad, or your nan? Say thank you, yeah. And what about uh, Deborah? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, you did. Okay, so, and we've got uh, Jonathan and Benjamin. Did they learn to say thank you? Are they good at saying thank you? Yeah, good. <laughs> Not the first word that comes to mind, but fairly early on. Thank you very much for coming. We're going to see you later. Go and have some fun doing some activities. Thank you. And see you later. So this morning's service, it's all about being grateful and saying thank you. I think last Sunday was set aside as kind of thank you day. Well, we're a week late. But I think actually as Christians, every day is a thank you day. So we won't worry about being late. But we're thinking this morning about expressing gratitude. And uh, we're going to be thinking of all the different things we thank God for and some of the challenges, because it's actually not as easy as it first appears. But if you can look in your service sheet, the first thing we're going to do is, oh, hang on, have I got the right bit? Yep. In your service sheet, you have a liturgy, a morning liturgy celebrating creation, because I think this is a level playing field. We're all grateful for the beauty of the world around us, aren't we? The beauty of what you can see, trees, grass, flowers, sunflowers, the beauty of creation. So I'm going to do the blit in blue, and you do the bit in green, okay? And I think you can say it quite loudly because we're outside. In the beginning, all was darkness. And God said, let there be light. In the beginning, all was silence. And God sang the song of creation. As God sang, all the stars and spheres vibrated to the music of God. In the beginning, all was still, and God laughed. Because God laughed, the waters took up the roar and the ripple of it, and ebbed and flowed and seeped and swirled and delighted in the ways of its being. In the beginning, all was dull, and God painted. And because God painted, the sky became blue and purple and pink, and rainbows hang there. The grass became green and flowers and butterflies danced in the drips and settled like jewels on the earth. In the beginning all was unconscious and God breathed. And because God breathed, men and women woke up from their sleeping. They breathed of the very life of God and 
stood in wonder before the works of God's hands. They beheld the glory of God in all that God had made, and they saw it was very good. In the beginning, God created all things, and God saw that they were good. At our beginning, God created us, unique and irreplaceable, all loved by God and wanted by God, known to God and treasured by God, just as God created us. In the beginning, God creates something new. So we will seek God in the freshness of the morning, in the laughter of friends, in the colors of creation, and in the warmth of the summertime sunshine. Lord God, King of creation, open our eyes to see your presence, our souls to sense your presence, and our hearts to love your presence amidst your creation and ever beyond into eternity. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be doing that this morning. Our songs are celebrating and giving thanks to God. And our first one does come from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So let us enter his gates. We literally have come through the gates now with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. For the Lord is good, amen, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So let's stand together and uh, just have free time to sing this morning.
Is it great to be outside? Mm. In Amen. full voice praising the Lord. Oh Lord my God. Oh Lord my God. In awesome wonder. sings my song. to be thankful for. We're going to sing the next song. I come before you today and I'm going to invite anybody who just wants to come up and uh, at the end of this song give thanks to God for something specific. We've been a bit general, we've talked about creation, but anything that you want to thank God for specifically. If you want to come, come up the front here at a metre distance or a bit more and then just give thanks for whatever you want to give thanks so we can all rejoice in that. So come up during this song and we'll listen to you at the end of it. I come before you today. I come, come before you today. And there's just one thing that I want. 
just so good to see everybody together again and uh, and even people that we've been praying for for healing are healed um, you know it's, it's so much better and we see them here and it's just so good and I just thank God for this place 
and thank God for all of you because that's who we are. All of us. We're all, this is who we are and who God has brought us together to be. And I just want to thank you, God. I just want to thank God for the strength and courage he's given me since my husband died last year. We've been together 50 years and now I've learned how to do lots of things. I never knew how. <laughs> it's quite hard, but I also like to thank you for all the new friendships I've made. I want to thank God for everything, everything I have. But the main thing for this week, I guess, is for, I want to thank God for being with Lucy through surgery and for bringing her out. And she's on the mend now, I saw her yesterday. And I just want to thank God for being with her, for giving her protection. And I just pray for her healing, dear little father. But I just want to thank for my dear little Lucy. Thank you, Lord, thank you so, so much, amen. Amen, thank God for our family. Well, I just want to thank God so much. Um, probably not all of you know, but I had to have um, two gastroscopies within six weeks be because they feared that I might have cancer. The tissue in my esophagus had changed. And so many people prayed that when I went back for the second one, they said there was no sign of cancer. So I, I praise God for that. I just want to thank you, Lord, for Fiona, Lord, for keeping her safe, keeping her protected, finding the cancer early, Lord. Everything's fine, they've taken... Thank you, Lord. I want to thank the NHS for all they've done, and it's truly been marvellous. Thank you, Lord, for all of that, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can I first start by saying, Hallelujah! We're going through very trying times at the moment. But God gives each one of us this promise. I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen. I just want to thank God for um, healing. I've had suffered from me rains and um, bad, bad headaches for more than 50 years. And in the last two years, after having woken up every morning for 25 years with a headache, I hardly ever get a headache now. I get a mild oh, headache, God. and I feel so much better, and I'm just overwhelmed that God has been so merciful, and I just give him the thanks and the praise. Amen. I just want to thank God for all the love and support that John and I have had. Um, the NHS, the doctors, the cleaners, everybody that's to do with looking after people in hospital and all your prayers that have got him through. He's almost a new man. So I thank you. Thank you very much for all your prayers for us. I would just like to thank God for this lovely church family and I would just like to thank God for the excitement on Maisie's face yesterday when I asked her if she wanted to come to church and she was so looking forward to it and I thank you for all the young people that are here today and bless them. Thank you. I'd just like to endorse that and say as a kind of newbie here, um, I don't think I've ever met such a welcoming, warm, loving church family and from the bottom of my heart I say thank you. I'm a newly, chris not christened, whatever, grandmother and it wasn't um, a great time. The baby was back in A&E literally in the last 24 hours or so but praise God, thank you for the prayers, thank you for the community and prayers are answered. They're so real and they've been real to us this week and all is well. So Daniel and Simona have Leonardo, Oliver and he's all good so thank you. Well, um, some of you know I've been at college and um, this term has been particularly difficult with um, problems with anxiety and things but um, I just want to thank God because I had a, a quite a big Hebrew exam um, recently and I really felt that I was going to fail because I just have not been good in our full term and um, I even spoke to my tutor about what would happen if I failed and actually I got there and God really carried me through. I, I sat down in front of that exam paper and everything that I'd learned just went out of my head and I didn't know what to do. And you know what, I, 
wasn't really expecting to pass, but I did pass, and I passed really well, and I can only say that's probably down to God. So. 81%. Oh, very good. Amanda. Hi, well, um, I'm new to the church. I haven't been here for very many weeks, but I just want to thank God for being present in my life, giving me support and reassurance because I haven't been very well. But And just to bring me together with the church, with all of you, and you've all been really supportive and welcoming, and I've just felt so reassured reassured and it's given me a lot of peace so i just want to say thank you to god and um, for bringing me together with you okay thank you Amen. Thank you. and in two weeks time we're having a baptismal service amanda you're going to be baptized and carol callingham where's carol callingham this morning oh she's not well oh well, it's a good job she's not well this week and not next week or the week up anyway two weeks time we'll be having a baptismal service so that's going to be exciting so lord we want to give you praise and thanks this morning lord thank you for everything we've heard each person who's wanted to come and give testimony and gratitude to you for something specific in their lives or in the lives of their family lord Thank you that we have celebrated the wonder of this beautiful world that you have placed us in, Lord. Whatever else is going on, we thank you that we have the beauty of trees and flowers, the sky, the air we breathe, the sea, the animals, birds, all the creatures, Lord. And we do thank you for one another, that you've placed us in families, in human families, but also in spiritual families. So we thank you for one another that today is a day when we can be together, physically speaking. Lord, that's, that's, that's wonderful after so many years or so many months, well, a year and a bit of not really being able to come together fully. So Lord, we pray this morning that you will speak to us. We pray this morning that we will make choices to be those who have grateful spirits. Lord, speak to us if there's anything you want to, us to do this morning, to change, if there's anything you want to remind us of this morning, Lord, we pray that you will do that. And we pray that we will go away from this place refreshed, restored, filled anew with your spirit ready to go out and serve you and live for you in the week that is ahead. So be with us, Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, as we've said, we're thinking this morning of gratitude and thanksgiving. It seems a very easy topic on the surface, but it's actually not quite as easy as it looks. Uh, Granville and June, I think you're going to come and, I shouldn't say entertain, but give us food for thought. These are supposed to be thank you letters that children have written after their birthday. Dear Uncle Bob, thank you for my watch which has a stopwatch and an alarm on it. My friend Tom has a watch which tells him how many steps he's taken and how his heart is beating. It's impressive. I hope you are well, love Peter. <laughs> Dear Aunt Jane, thank you for the calculator and geometry set you sent me. It will be very useful next year when I start secondary school. I had a princess party for my birthday and a caterpillar cake and we all dressed up as fairies. Love, Lucy. Dear Uncle George, thank you for the small football you gave me. I've been playing Euro Cup football on my laptop and I got through to the finals. Mum says you might visit soon. Love, Michael. Dear Aunt Catherine, thank you for the book about horses that you gave me for my birthday. One day I'm going to learn to ride and I'm going to have my own horse and my own stable. Love, Alice. Thank you. So maybe there's a bit more to being thankful than just saying thank yous. 
more to being grateful than meets the eye. I'm sure we all remember as children, so I asked the children to come up, do you remember your mother or your father telling you to say sorry? And really, nothing inside you was sorry at all. You felt forced to say it on the outside, but, well, am I the only one who never felt it on the inside and you say sorry, and you didn't, certainly didn't feel it on the inside. Well, you're obviously much purer than I am anyway. And uh, thank yous, yes, I'm sure all of us had good parents who taught us that we had to write thank you letters. And as we've heard, sometimes they're rather um, vacant on real gratitude, aren't they? Um, uh, it's rather muted sometimes, rather underwhelming, and maybe even insincere at some times. But, uh, you know, I'm sure we'd all agree that thank yous really, really are very important. I was uh, reading this morning before coming out a couple of things. I found some good quotes. This isn't just among Christians. This is in the world generally. I think we'd all agree that uh, gratitude, thankful spirits, and actually saying it to people is very, very important. So William Arthur Wood, whoever he was, I'm not sure, said, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. Oprah Winfrey, oh dear, can we mention her in church? Oh, we're not in church, it's okay. So, Be thankful for what you have, you'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never ever have enough. And H.A. Ironside, we would worry less if we praised more. Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent, discontent and dissatisfaction. Some people are always grumbling because roses have thorns. I'm thankful that thorns have roses. And you always have to have a quote from G.K. Chesterton, don't you? When it comes to life, the critical thing is not whether you take things for granted, but whether you take them with gratitude. So a few wise thoughts there from just people in the world. But of course, the Bible is full, full, full of exhortations for us to be thankful, to have grateful spirits, to express appreciation. There's so many of them, we couldn't possibly get through them all. We'd be here till after the cup final tonight, and uh, I don't want to be here that long, I don't know about you, but uh, other things to do during the day. There's Wimbledon as well, we've got to watch that, some of us, anyway. But uh, the Bible is so full of exhortations to be thankful. Just look at the Psalms. If you were to go through the Psalms and underline every time there was thanksgiving, or it says praise, you would have half your Bible underlined, I think. We sung the first one this morning, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. That's in Psalm 100. And if you carry on in Psalm 101, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, every Psalm seems to start with give thanks to the Lord. Okay, so it's no secret that we are meant to be people with gratitude. When we get to the New Testament, there's again lots and lots and lots of verses which encourage us to adopt a positive, grateful spirit. And as we'll look at in a moment, the fact is also that sometimes that really isn't easy. It's not as easy as it seems at first sight. So just thinking for a few moments, uh, what's gratitude? What are the benefits of being grateful? And then some of the challenges that we're all facing right this moment. So gratitude has, we all know, it's the ability or decision to focus on the positive, see what is good in a situation, to express contentment, to appreciate things amidst everything that is not so good. It's appreciation, thankfulness, gratitude, positivity. And as those sayings have said, there are great benefits, but uh, there was a study in 2020, that was in the pandemic even, that uh, found that regularly practicing gratitude can help ease symptoms of anxiety and depression. And I'm sure most of us here have had a few symptoms of anxiety or depression in the last year or so. It also, elsewhere, all sorts of benefits. It can improve your health. Gratitude helps deal with adversity. Gratitude releases positive emotions. It's bit difficult to look miserable and be grateful at the same time. 
It encourages people. When people are grateful and are saying thank you, it is encouraging, isn't it? The opposite is very discouraging. Do you ever get um, a bit cross with people? You make way for them on the road. You let them go when they really shouldn't. And if they don't just put their finger up, you think, for goodness sake, you know. All they need to do is that, and you think, oh, that's good. It's encouraging. So it encourages everyone. It helps build strong relationships. You know, I love spending time with grateful people, don't you? People who are always being positive and grateful. It certainly does help. Gratitude shows humility, actually, because if you're grateful to God and to others, it means you don't think it was all down to you. So expressing gratitude is a humble experience. It expresses our confidence when we give gratitude to God, and it does show that we have contentment. We may not have everything, we may not be the richest people of earth, but we are content. So we have all sorts of reasons just out there in the world to be grateful to God. But you know, as Christians, I believe, I'm sure we all believe this, we have so much to be thankful to God for. Do you believe that? I put on the front of the, the song sheet this morning, I think it said, thank you God for blessing me more than I deserve. I really believe I have been blessed in my life more than I deserve. Does anybody else feel that? That's actually a good sign of whether you've got a grateful spirit. We have so much to be thankful for. And just thinking spiritually for a moment, we've thought of other things. We've thought of creation. We've thought of gratitude for passing exams and uh, finding strength. That's all good. But just think for a few moments of all the spiritual things. If we are believers and followers of Jesus, we have. I was thinking this morning, I'm so grateful for the God that we follow, aren't you? I'm so grateful he's such a good God. You read the Psalms, it keeps saying he's a good God. He's a good God. You know, there are gods in this world who really aren't good gods. I've been to places in the world where the only way you um, worship God is having to give money and sacrifices. And you think, that's not nice. You're trying to appease his anger all the time. That's not a good God. But thank God we have a God who is so good. And I started making a list of all the attributes of God that we could give thanks for. You can go on for hours. So if you have a sleepless night tonight... Um, just think of all the good qualities of God. He is good. He is faithful. He is compassionate. He's slow to get angry. I'm pleased about that one, aren't you? Because I have tried his patience in the past. He is merciful. He's holy. I'm glad he's holy. Because if he's as dodgy as the rest of us, we're not going to get very far. He is loving. That's so good. God is love. Amen. He is forgiving. We've sung about that. He's almighty. He's kind. He's caring. He's gracious. He's generous. And so on and so on and so on. So everything isn't right with the world, is it? But God is a good God and we belong to him. He's our father. And that always gives me hope. I'm grateful that we worship such a good God. So that we don't have to live in fear and trembling, but that we can draw close to him. I'm thankful too that he came up with a plan to send Jesus to the world, aren't you? That is a masterstroke. No other religion thought that one up. But God sent his only son into the world so that we could understand him. So that we could experience him. We could, we could see who God is and he could draw close to us. So he's not a God just who's out there in this beautiful sky. He's a God who draws close to us in Jesus. And I'm so grateful for that, aren't you? The, the day we met and became followers of Jesus was a great day with eternal consequences. So I thank, I'm very grateful that everything that God is, we see in Jesus. He's told us everything. We just have to look at Jesus and there we encounter God. Isn't that wonderful? So he came and lived, he came and died, and he came and rose again. We know all that, we haven't got time to rejoice in all that in fullness, but I hope you're grateful to be a follower of Jesus. Anyone grateful for that? Yeah, whatever's wrong out there in the world, we're followers of Jesus, and Jesus shows us who God is. And I'm also grateful for the Holy Spirit, aren't you? Someone who said the Holy Spirit brings us strength. How would you get through a day if you didn't have the Holy Spirit? Have you thought of that? I have no idea how we get through, actually. It must be the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank, 
thank God that he is also producing his character in us. We're getting to be better people. I'm better than I used to be. You might not think I'm much yet, but I can tell you I'm better than I used to be. Ask my sister, she would know. And if my parents were still alive, they would certainly know that. So Paul was right, wasn't he? In Ephesians 1 verse 3, should know this verse. Praise be to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he has blessed us in the spiritual realms with every blessing in Christ. Now, some of you don't look that convinced. You are allowed to smile, but uh, that's it. He has given us so many spiritual blessings. We may have COVID going on. You may have sickness in your body. You may have money problems. We've all got those things, but we have a God who is eternal, He's called us to be into his family. He's given us all the resources we're going to need to get through. So we have a lot to be thankful. And I'm with Paul on this one, that we have every spiritual blessing in Christ. So when you're having a bad day, as we will do sometimes, it's good to sit down and just count your spiritual blessings. We're going to do that now in the song that we're going to sing. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, that we belong to you, that we're followers of Jesus. Jesus came and lived for us. He died for us. He's forgiven us. He's washed us clean. He's given us eternal life. He's given us a future, and he's given us a hope. I think we'll stand up for this one because you need to stretch your legs. Thank God we've got legs to stand on. If you can't, if you feel you want to sit, that's fine. We'll let Ralph sit because he's rather... Um, older than most of us but it's lovely to have you here Ralph thank you for the cross Lord
we can all sing and not just listen. Praise God. Thank you. Please take your seats. So we know that uh, God wants us to be grateful, thankful people. We've already looked that we've got so much to be thankful for in creation, in our own lives, and all the spiritual blessings. But what I like about the Bible is it's very real. It's very practical. And looking out on all you lot, I don't see too many charmed lives out there. I don't see many people sitting there thinking, everything is rosy in my garden. My life is a bowl of cherries. Anybody like that today? No, there's not one of you who dares put your hand up because life is, well, Ruth, bless you. I mean, Ruth's the most, one of the most positive people I know. But, uh, you know, life is tough, isn't it? And, um, you know, I'm glad that the Bible is realistic because it tells us to cultivate grateful spirits but it does recognize that it's not always easy it's a choice we have to make it's a challenge that we have to um, grapple with and there are several verses which kind of give us a bit of a um, indicator of this so Paul Paul was one of the most grateful men in the New Testament and he certainly didn't have a char charm life reading Corinthians all the things he had to go through so it's not actually what's going on in your life and the, all the bad stuff that happens it's it's still a choice it's still as to whether we want to be grateful and he said in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 there are a few verses where you sometimes would cheerfully remove from the Bible wouldn't you be joyful always you think oh yeah come on get real pray continually give thanks in all circumstances for this is god's will for you in christ jesus do you like that verse that's an easy verse isn't it it says pr give be joyful always now that's difficult, isn't it? That really is very, very difficult. I don't really know anybody who's always joyful. I know some people like Ruth, who's joyful most of the time, and a few other people that I know. But uh, what I like in this verse, it says, give thanks in all circumstances. It doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. There are circumstances which we certainly cannot give thanks for. I'm not gonna give thanks for cancer. I'm not going to give thanks for pandemics, etc. So many things. But we're not asked to give thanks for them. We're asked to give thanks in them. Very different. Just a small word, but very different. So looking around at all the challenges that all of us are facing, and uh, I know most of the people here, I know some of the challenges you're going through. And they're not easy. It's not easy unless we choose to say, okay, I'm going through a bad time. The world's going through a bad time, but I will find something in this to give thanks for, because there's always things to give thanks for if we choose to. Would you agree? It's a choice. It's a choice. So I'm glad that uh, Paul was uh, realistic there. Then the writer to the Hebrews, whoever that was, I don't think it was Paul, but he says something else. Hebrews 13, verse 15 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Okay, sacrifice. That, doesn't, that sounds painful to me. Sacrifices are not easy things, are they? So sometimes giving thanks to God is sacrificial. It's hard. Do you find it hard sometimes? We do find it hard. And again, it's a choice whether I'm going to make the effort, when I'm going to sacrifice my emotions at any one time to saying, okay, my emotions might not be that good at the moment, but I will choose to give a sacrifice of praise. Some of you here this morning, you're praising and it is a sacrifice and God is pleased with that. And that's the reality. So it's not always easy. It's not just as easy as saying, thank you, thank you. Sometimes it comes from deep within a struggling, a burdened spirit, but it's a choice to bring a sacrifice. Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7, that's what we had last week. This one's one of those you think, yeah. It says in Colossians 2, verse 6, it says, So then, just as you've received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in his, him and, as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. 
Oh no, not overflowing. Can't we just have a little bit? Can't we just have a, a, a slight smidgen of thankfulness? But no, we are encouraged to overflow. And I guess that means let your gratitude out on other people. Choose to express gratitude. Choose to say thank you. Choose to look at what is good and use your lips to talk about that. There was a man called Roberto Benigni. He's Italian. Maybe I shouldn't mention any Italians today, but we love Italians, even though they may win Wimbledon and they may win football. That's not prophetic, but it could happen. He said the sign, it's a sign of mediocrity when you demonstrate gratitude with moderation. So we should overflow with gratitude. We should choose to express it. Just check yourself this week. How many times on your lips you are grateful, you express gratitude, you express thankfulness to God. It will do you the world of good. So we need a bit of an overflow of gratitude. Could go on like this for a long time. We won't do Psalm 42. Psalm 42 is one of my favourite psalms because the psalmist in Psalm 42 talks to himself. And the older I get, and the more I've been on my own, I keep, do you find yourself talking to yourself? Anybody else? If you live in a house with other people, you probably don't need to, but I'm always going around chuntering to myself, talking, checking things out. Anybody else doing that? It's not a sign of madness, it's biblical, so that's good. So the psalmist, if you know Psalm 42, he had to give himself a talking to, because what did he do? He dipped, he dipped into the slough of despond. Do you ever do that? I sometimes get a bit low in spirit. Sometimes, sometimes in the evening, particularly through the pandemic, I think, ah, oh, this is just awful, you know? And you find yourself sinking into that slough of despond. Am I the only one or does anybody else get a bit despondent and low sometimes? Well, the Bible says when you do that, give yourself a talking to. Why are you cast down, oh my soul? Why are you so depressed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. So I'm glad that's in there, isn't it? Because it recognises that sometimes we dip, but don't dip and dip and dip and dip. Don't go too far until you begin again, focusing again on all that God is and God is good. I've asked Jan to just come up and share a short testimony. I have to say, Jan is one of the most positive people I know. Now, this is, this is going to be a hard act to follow. She's not perfect at it. I'm sure she has bad hair days. But I have to say, Jan, for all the years of working you, I'm grateful to have worked with someone who's a positive, spirited, grateful person. So I don't know how you've learned it over the years, but something must have happened because I know you haven't got an easy life. It's not that everything is rosy in your garden. So just come and share for a few minutes, maybe, how you, what lessons you have learned. Um, give thanks to the Lord our God is good. His love endures forever. And Pastor Linda, it's confirmation of the verse I chose, um, which I too find very challenging. And as I look around me, I see lots of people who for many years have had challenges in their life. I see many people who've been bereaved, um, have, have got long-term mobility problems. But this is my testimony. Well, and Bill's as well. <laughs> and it was what Linda said, rejoice always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I find that a real challenge. Um, as you, many of you know, we were, we've been blessed with good health and a lovely marriage, ups and downs, of course, um, <laughs> um, for 50 plus years. And um, Bill especially was badly hit by the pandemic and is, as you know, suffering from long COVID. Um, but I thought, I, and I give thanks for 50 years of marriage. I really thank God for that. I thank God for all the healthy years we've had. Bill never had any sickness at all. And I, I don't give thanks that he can hardly walk, and I don't give thanks that you struggle. But I do, we're, I'm called to give thanks for all the amazing years that we've had together. Um, and as I was thinking this morning about all this, um, many people have said what I was going to say, but that's good. means I'll be a bit shorter. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about food and how grateful I am that we live in a country with food. And then 
God reminded me that when I'm in Aldi on a Monday afternoon, I, I'm so sure some of you do, I look at the till, see which is the shortest, and then look and think, oh, I could have gone to that one. But God reminded me, I need to give thanks for what's in my trolley. I need to do that, not worry if I'm in the longest queue, but um, also to give thanks for that. Um, and the other thing that happened this morning, um, our shower is not working well. It's some um, hot and cold water. So I was, had all the shampoo on my hair and I was like, no, no. Um, but then God reminded me of that advert we see on the television where those young children are carrying water on their back and they've got it out of polluted water. And I think, I'm not I'm going to worry, I'm going to give thanks to you, God, that I have got running water in our house. Um, and also, as Linda said, we all have ups and downs, but if we can hang on to God in it all and be grateful to him for all he's done for us. And also, the best way to defeat Satan attacks of disappointment, fears and worries is through a thankful heart. So when we're thanking God, we're defeating Satan. We're saying, you're not going to have your way. You're not going to have your way in our marriage. You're not going to have your way in all our circumstances. Um, I just um, want to finish with Colossians and just encourage you all, all through the ups and downs, that God is faithful. God is love endures forever. Amen. I just finished with Colossians 3:15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to be to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And I do believe we've done that today, haven't we? We've sung to God with gratitude in your hearts, in our hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And we're just going to have a song in a moment. The children are going to come forward. But uh, I just want to echo Paul's prayer. We've already talked about Paul this morning. Remember, it's not the troubles. It's the choice and the taking up the challenge to be grateful. So we know that Paul in Ephesians reminded us of all our spiritual blessings. And then in his prayer, he said, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks. Gives thanks for all sorts of things, but he actually gives thanks for you. Let us give thanks for one another this morning. Motley selection we are. What a selection with a dog and uh, people of all ages and shapes and sizes and um, different nationalities. But thank God for one another. I thank God for you. Most of you anyway. No, all of you. Thank God for all of you. So let us do that. And in, in Philippians, he, I think that's what you read, Jan, so we'll stop, we'll stop there. But uh, let's just reflect on this in the week that is ahead. What choices are we making? Where are we focusing? What are the challenges that are before us, but we choose to express gratitude to one another and to God? Um, while the children come up, this is your cue in a minute. We're going to sing another song, which is a song of salvation. Do you remember the day you became a Christian? I do. Yeah, loved yes. it. I was in Cape and Ray Hall in Carnforth, Lancashire, and I loved that day, and I'm always appreciative of that day. I'm glad it happened early because I've had lots of years, not quite as many as Ralph, 90 years. Wasn't it good to see Ralph this morning for a little while? 90 years of faith. I can't quite boast 90, but I can boast... 40. 50. No, it's 50 now. Oh, dear. <laughs> 50 years. I want to get to 90, though, if I can. So let's just remember your day when you met with Jesus, your day when you came to him. When I lost, you came and rescued me. I think we stand up for this one while the children come forward. Lost 
you came and rescued me. Reach down into the pit and lifted me. Oh Lord, such love I was as far from you as I could be. You know all the things I've ever done, but Jesus' blood has cancelled it. Trees, but look at these, they're beautiful. 
And this one, what about technology? It's a long word, isn't it? Anyone like technology? Yeah, anyone yeah. there like technology? Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, computers, iPads, mobile phones, where would we be without those? So there's some of the T's. Oh, and tea. Where would we be without a cup of tea? The English. Well, even Martin, you love tea, don't you? Love tea. Argentinian. I've never met anyone who likes tea more than Martin. <laughs> right, so that's the first one that goes there. Okay. Right, the next letter is H. What have okay, we got on here? It. We're going to hold it, Coco. We've got all people's hands. Are you grateful to God for your hands? Yes. You think what you couldn't do if you didn't have any hands. You wouldn't be able to eat very well, would you? You wouldn't be able to wash yourself. You wouldn't be able to play games. All sorts of things. You wouldn't be able to play with sellotape. Get sellotape off things. So H is for hands. Thank God for our hands. So that's an H. Right now, A. What have we got here? Do you know what this one was? It's the air. Are you grateful for the air we breathe? You think we would be up the creek without a paddle if we didn't have air? Richard Branson might find that when he goes up in space at lunchtime. He's going to the edge of the atmosphere. So that's it. Did you know what these things were? No, that's a difficult word. Asparagus. Anybody thankful to God for asparagus? It's funny, when we go into school, uh, we go in at lunchtime, and all the children bring out their lunch trays, and all the green vegetables are left on the plates. So asparagus is good. Asparagus, good. So we've got air, asparagus, apples, and animals. Yeah, apples are good, aren't they, Jonathan? <laughs> we had a bit of a theological debate this week. Because you had a story about apples in school, didn't you? Because yeah. Adam and Eve ate an apple and they got banished from the garden. So I think Jonathan's off apples at the moment, <laughs> in case he doesn't get back in. Ah, oh. Right, so we've got an A, N. Oh, what we got on here, Eden? Uh, we have a nose. Noses, are you grateful for your nose? Yes. Well, maybe not your individual nose. You might not like the shape of it, but you think if we couldn't smell beautiful things? Coffee in the morning, the smell of roses. So we've got noses, what else we got? Uh, nature. Nature, yes, we talked about that this morning. Um, NHS. NHS, I think we should give a clap to the NHS. Yeah, we really this morning. Um, and a napkin. A napkin. Now, would you like to tell us why you're grateful to God for napkins? Um, good for cleaning up messes. <laughs> <laughs> Good for cleaning up messes. Very good. And this one down here is your nanny. It's good to have nanas and granddads. Sarah, you're a nana now. So that's N. Right, K. You're going to put that one up? K. What have we got on the K's? Can I take a slide? KFC. KFC. Well, that might not be your favourite takeaway, but thank God for takeaway restaurants. Do you think if we didn't have those, we'd be up the creek without a paddle? Ketchup and Kellogg's, but hopefully not together. Yeah, not ketchup and keller to get. Who likes ketchup? Tomato ketchup? Yeah, yes. I know it's it's considered low society, but it's good on chips, isn't it? Ketchup and cereal in the morning. Yep. Yep. Who's this here? Harry Kane. Woo! Harry Kane! Are we grateful to God for Harry Kane? Yes. We'll tell you tomorrow morning. You're great. We're grateful thus far, but. Harry Kane! Come on, England! And kites! I love kites, don't you? And I was thinking about Afghanistan recently where they may not still be able to fly kites if the Taliban get back. Horrible. Okay, right. What about why? What have you got on yours here? I've got some sunflowers. And what colour are they? Yellow. Yellow. Who likes the colour yellow? Yes, I don't like it in cloning, but I like it in everything else. So we've got yellow things, there's a yellow motorbike. And what's this here? Do you know what that is? Yeah. Begins with why you eat it for your pudding sometimes. Yogurt! Do we like yogurt? You kind of think it's the healthy option. It may not be because it's probably full of sugar, but yogurt. Yeah, okay. Right, Mr. Jonathan, what have you got on O? <laughs> what is that? It's an orangutan. 
Who likes orangutans? I love orangutans. Have you ever seen one? And what are these? Do you know what those are? Oreos. Do you like biscuits? Biscuits! Yeah, you might not like Oreos, but we like biscuits, don't we? And you know what these are? Oranges. I remember you came to church a few weeks ago, and I could smell it all around the building. So, and then these are other people. We've been thanking God for all the other people. So that's an O. Oh, and lastly, Benjamin. <laughs> There's a slight, um, I don't know why the corner there got here, they should have been in the cage. Never mind, we've got one of these things. When you rain, are we thankful to God for umbrellas? Yeah. We certainly need an umbrella or a parasol. And this is actually a ukulele. Good to have you with us, Carol. You'll be playing again one day. Or oh, all musical instruments, it's great to have ukulele. And all the things that are under the water. Okay, when we go swimming. Okay, so I think we've got so many things there to be thankful for. And you've been eating cake and having fruit and stuff, haven't you? Good, so you've had a good morning. That's great. So that just reminds us all sorts of things we've got to give thanks to God for. So we're going to have our last song now. James is just back at the right time, that's good. Thank you very much. If anybody wants a piece of cake, I'm sure there's plenty left. But uh, we are grateful to God. I'll get out of the way. You can see it for a moment. So if we're going to be grateful to God, then that's going to help us as we go on here, trusting God. So many things we've still got to trust God for. So many things not answered yet. Don't know how it's going to be. Don't know how it's going to turn out. But we are going to trust in God. Well, I'm trying to anyway. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to trust in Jesus. And then we'll get it get through... Um, in this, how steady is his hand to guide us through this world. So we'll stand up and end our service with this. Amen. I'd just like to say um, on behalf of the worship team, we're grateful to be out here with yes. you guys. Um, Thank you. And Thank you James, Great singing. Well, putting it all yeah. together. <laughs> Well, yeah, but uh, also, um, um, obviously, we're missing um, one particular person who's just um, become a, a mother. <laughs> so, again, so um, a shout out to Hannah and to Tyrone. Um, they're always I'm around. I'm going baby whenever. viewing tomorrow. I've been invited. Oh, so. you have? I'm going yeah. to baby view tomorrow. Yes. So, yes. Okay. But just to say that it is a privilege. And, you know, these past 18 months um, have felt really, very, really very hard. But today we can praise God and declare our faith and our trust in him. Amen. And I don't know about you, but we're going to do just that. Yeah. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to trust in Jesus. Without shame.
thank you. Yeah, thank you to uh, James and Andrew and Mickey. Actually, they were here from about, well, I think Andrew were the first here about half past eight or something, yeah, but from yeah. nine o'clock. So there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, getting all the wires and the chairs out. So, and, and James, thank you uh, for coming early and putting it all together. If some of you are willing to stack some chairs at the end, that would be a real blessing. And we will say thank you to you. Um, just to say, I'm away for part of this week. I'm going to Ireland on Wednesday. I think, Peter and Susan, you just come back from Ireland. You got back safely. You didn't get pinged on the flight or anything. Great. I'm just praying I don't get pinged because Isabel got pinged when she got back from Ireland. So uh, I'm going just to, uh, as part of my work with Paraclete, to meet the couple who are going to Benidorm in Spain to be ministers. And I'm so grateful to God for them. But I've never met them other than on Zoom, so it'll be an opportunity to see a bit of Northern Ireland and meet them. So uh, I won't be away. I won't be answering calls after Wednesday. So if you need me, it's before Wednesday. I'm away till Saturday, but be back next Sunday. Just also to say, uh, those of you who are expressing interest on coming on the ladies' holiday, I need to speak to you before you go today because the dates have changed. As some of you know, just checking whether or not you are wanting to still come. So let's just finish by saying the grace together because we can talk to each other without fear of. COVID getting us. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.